Here's a diagram of a particle moving in a circle with uniform circular motion. It's called uniform circular motion because the speed is uniform or constant. So you see all three vectors here. The magnitude of the velocity vector is the same. The only thing that's changing is the direction. Remember that a velocity vector has speed and direction, so if either one of those is changing, we have acceleration. If the speed changes, we call it linear acceleration. If the direction changes, we call it centripetal acceleration. For uniform circular motion, only the direction is changing, not the magnitude of the velocity. So the object in uniform circular motion experiences centripetal acceleration. Let's figure out what is the magnitude and the direction of the centripetal acceleration vector. Here are some diagrams that we'll be using to do this. The particle P is moving in a circle. It has velocity vector V. The particle P is at the coordinate x comma y, and it is traveling in a direction that is measured relative to the y-axis, and we're going to show that this angle here is the same as this angle here in this right triangle. If this is a right triangle and this angle is theta, then we know this angle right here is going to be 90 minus theta. And the velocity vector is always tangent to the circle, so that means it makes a right angle with the radius to the point of where the particle is located. And if that's 90 degrees, and this is a straight line, which is 180 degrees, so if this is 90 minus theta and this is 90, then this has to be theta so that it adds up to 180 degrees. So using our second diagram, we see that the velocity vector has an x and a y component to it. So we can write our velocity vector in unit vector notation, the x component of velocity in the i direction and the y component of the velocity in the j direction. Let's redraw our x component of velocity right here. And now using this right triangle and sine and cosine of theta, we can show that vx is equal to v sine theta, but it points to the left, so it's negative. And vy is equal to v cosine theta, and it points up, so it's positive. So we can replace this vx and this, y, this vy with these expressions here to come up with our velocity vector and unit vector notation, negative v sine theta in the x direction and v cosine theta in the y direction. Now let's use our second diagram and apply it to our equation for velocity in unit vector notation. We're going to replace sine theta and cosine theta with their equivalents from this triangle here in our second diagram. So we see that sine theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is y over r. Cosine theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is x over r. So we'll replace sine theta with y over r and cosine theta with x over r to come up with an equivalent unit vector notation equation for our velocity. We know that acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So let's do that. Let's take the derivative of this equation. Velocity is constant, the magnitude is constant, and the radius of the circle is constant. So when we take the derivative of this term, the v and the r pull outside, and we are left with the derivative of y with respect to time. Likewise, over here, we're left with the derivative of f x with respect to time. So in the i term, the derivative of y with respect to time is velocity in the y. So that equals v cosine theta. And the derivative of x with respect to time is the velocity in the x, which is equal to minus v sine theta. So when we multiply negative v over r times v cosine theta, we come up with negative v squared over r cosine theta. And when we multiply v over r times negative v sine theta, we come up with negative v squared over r sine theta. 
So now we have a, an equation for our acceleration in unit vector notation. So we now have our acceleration vector in unit vector notation. What is the magnitude and direction of that vector? Well, the magnitude of the acceleration, or the magnitude of any vector in unit vector notation, we know is the Pythagorean theorem of its x and y components. So we'll square the x component, square the y component, and take the square root of it. And we see that it simplifies to this. But the trig identity cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is 1. So the square root of 1 is also 1. So we see that the magnitude of the acceleration vector is v squared over r, where v is the tangential velocity squared, and r is the radius of the circle. To find the direction of the acceleration vector, we draw a diagram. I see here that the x component of the acceleration is in the negative direction and the y component of the acceleration is in the negative direction. So I've drawn here uh, an x component of acceleration to the left, which is negative, and a y component of acceleration downward, which is negative. And now I want to find out what is this angle phi that will describe the direction of my acceleration vector. Well, I see from this triangle that the tangent of phi is equal to the opposite over the adjacent side. So that's AY over AX. And we saw previously that, or, or we see here actually, that the Y component of A is minus V squared uh, over R divided by sine theta. And the X is negative V squared over R cosine theta. So when I set up this ratio, I come up with this expression here. And I see, of course, the V squared, the R, and the negative sign cross out, and I'm left with tan of phi is equal to tangent of theta. And when I compare that to my diagram that I started with, if tan theta and tan phi are the same, phi is equal to theta, and I know then that the direction of the acceleration vector points from here to the center of the circle. So the direction of the centripetal acceleration is towards the center of the circle.